Lockdown back in 2020 and 2021 was worldwide and was horrendous. But imagine what 17 years of lockdown must have been like on two square miles of rock. An entire generation of young people with young families, some of whom lost their freedom for all their teenage years, with families separated yet again. For some, it was only 15 years after being allowed back onto the rock to be reunited with their families after the evacuation from World War II. Yes, whilst the USA and the UK were rocking around the clock, it took until 1952 for all the Gibraltarians to be returned to their homes from various places around the world, some seven years after the war ended. When the border fully reopened, tempers and feelings ran high after the long lockdown and understandably so. The British government had done nothing to prevent this and had allowed the people on the rock to stay locked up all that time. The sewers and water systems didn't work well, there were cockroaches and dilapidated buildings everywhere, and the electric kept cutting out. The entire country had been run on a shoestring budget, and the British government had not stepped up to help. The hand-me-down buses in Gibraltar were gifted from the UK, but only after they'd seen many years of active service elsewhere. The people in Gibraltar had done the very best they could to continue with the small funds they had. La Linea and the surrounding Campo area suffered greatly too, and were, at that time, one of the most impoverished parts of the whole of Spain. There was a story which was told from people on both sides of the frontier, Gibraltarian and Spanish, and also from military personnel that were stationed in Gibraltar during World War II. Perhaps it's just a story, but perhaps it has its foundations in truth. As they say, there is no smoke without fire. Before the war, there was a race course in Gibraltar that had been built by the Maltese living there. Malta and Gibraltar have a long history of trade together, and in fact many of the buildings on the rock are actually of Maltese design and not Spanish, as many tourists believe. The British government wanted to turn the racecourse into an airfield for the duration of the Second World War, since the site was perfect, except it wasn't quite wide enough and fell short in distance by a few feet. Spain was on its knees trying to recuperate after the Civil War, which had left the country bereft and bankrupt, and it would not participate in the World War, deciding to remain neutral. The British government asked Franco if they could move the border back by about 50 feet, so it said, and presumably gave him some money since he readily agreed. This was done with the condition that it would be returned after the war was over. It was never returned, and that would certainly explain why Franco was so mad that he ordered the border shut and also so mad that he erected the Sepsa refinery just outside Gibraltar with the famous speech of, we will smoke them out like rats. The Gibraltarian people had once again done absolutely nothing to deserve this. They were just used as pawns. In more recent times, we saw that any talks between Spain and the UK resulted in chaos and queues at the border. The failure of returning the land when promised would have been enough to make Franco angry, and rightly so. Even after his death, it took some years before the border was reopened fully. Despite this, the Gibraltarian people voted to remain British, not once, but twice. So British they will stay, because that's their choice. They also voted to remain in the EU. That was their choice and understandably so, since nobody wanted the border to close again and everybody wanted the trade and free movement of people to continue with Spain, so both countries could benefit. The British government has a history of promising to look after things and return them at a later date, except that date doesn't always come. It's as if they've uh, lost their marbles. The days of Britannia rules the waves and the British Empire rules the world ended quite some time ago, but some people have yet to read the memo. 
Nobody rules the world except God the Father with Mother Nature in assistance. However, Britain can't take all the credit for claiming territories in various parts of the world. Spain, Portugal, Denmark, the Netherlands, Belgium and quite a few other countries have done the same thing. The ancient Romans were particularly good at it. Perhaps the Brits learned it from them. Not the people, you understand. Folks are just folks the world over. It's the governments that have been in the driving seat. England has behaved rather badly in the past. It's argued with all its closest neighbours, with France, Wales, Scotland and Ireland. The Scots and Welsh tried to keep the English out via Hadrian's Wall and Offa's Dyke, and wisely so whilst the French actually allowed a tunnel to be built so they could be connected physically to England. Heaven knows why. Imagine pillaging a lovely green island close by and leaving the people there with nothing to eat but potatoes. Then, when potato blight strikes and there's nothing left for them to eat at all, you punish the people for taking a loaf of bread to feed their families and sending them to a land down under for the rest of their days. After that, you're actually surprised that they don't like you. Thankfully, all of that is well and truly in the past. The world has moved on and so must the British government. The days of shoot first and ask questions later are over and it's now time for sitting down together and making right the wrongs. Agreements are made in this way, so let's agree. Let's move on and leave the past where it belongs. Let's look to the future because it's a bright one.